All right, welcome back to the Let's Play of Sea of Stars. Seeing as we are in the middle of a flashback, I will only say that I would love it if you hit those like, subscribe buttons, and that I also like it that you're tagging along in this adventure. Later that year at the Winter Solstice Festival. Look, the Great Eagle. A new child of the solstice is born. Read the name. Valer. Welcome Valer. May Lyanna's might protect you. May Lyanna's might protect you. Six months later at the summer solstice festival. Did you hear that? The Great Evil delivers, delivers on two solstices in a row. A blessed year. Come on, read the name. Zael. Welcome Zael. May Solon's light guide you. May Solon's light guide you. A few years later. Rugals. Haha, <laughs> now we're talking. Erlina. Keep it up, Valer. Jaya. Go. Hey, the snacks are ready. Oh, are you two joining us? There's plenty for everyone, but I'm not sure we can show you our secret hideout. No time, we have to report to the headmaster. Okay, but please don't look which way we're going. Last one there does the dishes. I remember when we were that age. Valer and Zael always make me smile. Hmm. We should leave now. Our next meeting is today at dusk. Right. One. So you are willing to hear us out this time? Hmm. You would rather do without the burden of the solstice warrior life, yes? A fresh start, perhaps? What exactly are you offering? A way out. We believe you will deem our terms interesting. Four. Interesting and fruitful too. Then speak up. One. We will handle everything else, but only Solstice Warriors can conjure a blood moon. But this world would be destroyed. Not before you got to leave it for a more favorable one. Can you guarantee Brugavs will be safe? Erlina, I... Naturally. We even have ways to make you forget that is your wish. Or forget and become stronger too. Um, one. So what will it be? The Dweller of Woe isn't that powerful, you know we can take it. Of course, but that other one no one knows about in the mountain that wipes memories, it's been growing for a long time. The Acolytes could be bluffing. Not given the knowledge they had of the Matriarch, plus it explains the seal. Hmm. Can't you see this world is doomed regardless? Moray never stopped being a mess, and the kids are way too young to be of any help. I can't accept leaving Valer and Zael behind to die like this. We will add a condition that they can, can go and live with you. Wouldn't you like that? 
What if they refuse? The Acolytes need us for the blood moon. They'll have no choice but to accept. Not them, I meant... Hey, wait! Well, let's pretend for now. We'll talk later. Hmm. There you are. Playing in your secret hideout again? You are training. I think I can use magic now. Is that so? Belair, Sale, please understand. Please accept. Lake Turquoise. Turquoise? Fluorescent Piranha and Three Unknown. Caught a clockwork crab. You caught a swordfish. Or a swordfish. You caught a ninja starfish. Blackwork crab, fluorescent piranha, swordfish, and ninja starfish. Song shrew marsh. Hey, want to hear a story? Yes. The 
two alchemists. Countless millennia ago, two powerful alchemists named Rishan and Aphoru set out to create the elixir of life and succeeded. As all things in alchemy come at a price, the gift of immortality caused their bodies to decay, leading them to conceal their hideousness under colorful robes. Reveling at first in the bright side of their immortal coil, they spent centuries nurturing the world and creating wonders to inspire its mortals. Over time, however, Aphor grew increasingly jealous of the ephemerality he would never taste again. Thus began his wicked journey into the forbidden schools of alchemy. A journey which would see every last bit of good in his heart dissipate as he experimented with soul, bone, flesh and blood alike. As fate would have it, Ephoral fully embraced evil and merged as the Fleshmancer, a vengeful immortal plaguing the world with his monstrous creations. Rashan tried intervening as best he could, but all that ensued was unspeakable chaos and collateral damage as the two former friends fought with godlike powers. After much struggle, Rashan discovered the Flesh Minion's only weaknesses to be solar and lunar magic a power bestowed upon those born during a solstice. He began training these children to become solstice warriors, singularly tasked with culling the number of Fleshman's cre oh, the Fleshman's creations. But the Foral's knowledge was also growing. Eventually he became capable of creating oddities of unlimited potential, known as dwellers. They would be impervious to all forms of magic except during a total eclipse, when solstice warriors would have a very short window to attempt taking them down. And dwellers, it turned out, were creatures in development feeding on local uh, life. Left to their own devices for too long, they would evolve into world eaters, spelling doom for all. Armed with knowledge and power, Solstice Warriors would patrol the world tracking dwellers to determine which should be taken down during the next eclipse. If they remained vigilant, there would never be a world eater, but Rashan knew such a stalemate would only cause a foral to devise something even worse. In a desperate attempt to get ahead, Rishan boldly performed transmutation alchemy on the very space-time continuum itself. After successfully splitting reality into countless timelines and parallel worlds, he shelved his alchemy vial and took up the mantle of archivist. On an endless journey across all realities, he would catalog every possible outcome in search of a resolution to the throes of the Fleshmancer. Meanwhile, the Foral rejoined, rejoiced at the infinite number of opportunities for destruction that had just opened up to him. To find some measure of peace amidst their immortal conflict, the two alchemists made a pact to let the fate of each timeline play out on its own. And so the game of Cat and Mouse began, played by dwellers and solstice warriors on one level, and by Rishan and Ephoral on another. Across a myriad of timelines and over innumerable centuries, some worlds would never be visited by a foral, while others would be cursed by his mark. Once marked, it was only a matter of time until a world met its finality, often following centuries of struggle. Each would either be destroyed by a world eater or permanently saved by the ascension of a pair of solstice warriors into guardian gods. As to when Rishan's plan of recomposing the timelines, whether he even knows how, remains to be seen. The end.
I want to leave cake. Rimming with ancient band.
Round six, maple syrup. Level up. Two physical attack, three physical defense, two magic attack, one mana point. Two physical attack, three magic defense, one mana point, two magic attack. One mana point, two magic attack, two physical attack, three physical defense. One mana point, two physical attack, three physical defense, two magic attack. Three physical defense, one mana point, two magic attack, two physical attack.
and three obsidian ore. And one spirit of Nimia. Humble points build 10% faster. Thank you all for tagging along in my Sea of Stars adventure. Ending it a bit abruptly here, but that's how it goes. If you are liking it, I would love to hit those like, subscribe buttons, and if I saw you again in the next part. But for now, it's time to say bye bye.